The village of Tissington is set in Derbyshire just off the Ashbourne to Buxton Road and it is here that the art of well dressing began. The well dressings in Tissington go back a long, long way. There are pictures of the hall well here being dressed as far back as the early 19th century. Of course, before this style began to be used, the villagers dressed the wells with gallons of flowers. That custom goes right back to 1349, when the village escaped the plague which swept across the rest of Derbyshire. You may remember the children's nursery rhyme, ring a ring of roses, a pocket full of posies, a tissue, a tissue, we all fall down. The ring of roses was a rash mark in the skin which was a symptom of the plague. Some people attribute this to the Great Plague of London in 1665, while others say it goes back to the Black Death of 1349. Here in Tissington, when the villagers escaped the plague of 1349, they attributed that to the pure water in their wells. So out of thanksgiving to God for their pure water, they have dressed the wells ever since. The style that we see today began in the early 19th century and certainly makes a striking impression with vivid colours and amazing artwork. We know that the biblical theme was in existence in these early days as it is mentioned in an agent's letter to Sir Henry Fitzherbert in 1830. Tissington itself is all the exquisite charm and character of an English country manor. It's an estate village built round the great Tissington Hall, Jacobean house of the Fitzherbert family. Tours of the hall are available by arrangement. During well dressing week, the village adopts a one-way system for traffic. The cars are parked on the top field and the buses are directed to the old station, which is normally a car park. Thousands of visitors come to see the well dressings and who could blame them? It makes for a lovely day out to walk through Tissington village any day and particularly during well dressing week. As an estate village it is rather different to most other villages. The different styles of property highlight the varying styles as the years have passed. The delightful gardens have something to attract the eye for everyone. A beautiful display of flowers, a wood carving done by chainsaw, railway memorabilia, old boots full of flowers, a working water pump and so much more. It's hard to believe that a little village of about 150 people would be a centre of enterprise. But there's quite a number of small industries going on here. Tourism has a strong place with several bed and breakfast establishments and the old coach house tea rooms and on the edge of the village, Bassett Wood Farm boasts luxurious accommodation, quaint tea rooms and caravan facilities. Several cottages within the village are also available for self-catering holidays. The Tissington Trail offers a relatively level walking and cycling path to see the surrounding countryside. Or if horse riding is your passion, the Tissington Trekking Centre has a wide range of reliable well-mannered horses to accommodate all levels of rider. As you walk round the village you'll also notice the recent clock repairers business behind the children's well and the long established candle workshop tucked in behind the yew tree well. The staff of On a Wick and a Prayer handcraft candles with individual designs and fragrances. White Peak Farm Butchery is an old slaughterhouse in Chapel Lane. It was purpose built in the Victorian era and served as a slaughterhouse for over a century. It has been a butchery since 1984, but there are still some reminders of its previous function within the building, like the cast iron rails round the roof and the old bull ring on the floor. Acanthus Gifts is a somewhat quirky shop, selling a wonderful variety of tasteful and unusual gifts perfect for Christmas shopping all year round. Or maybe you'd prefer something more immediate and a wee trip down memory lane. 
then visit the new sweetie shop right across the road for some good old fashioned bonbons, midget gems or licorice all sorts. If you want to take some flowers or shrubs home with you, visit Tissington Plant Nursery, where a range of herbaceous perennial shrubs, climbers and alpines can be seen in the old kitchen gardens behind the village pond. But if you visit Tissington in Ascension Week, it will be the well dressings that you want to see. Massive collage displays all made from natural materials, and each one displaying a beautiful picture. Wow, just look at these. Many people wonder how they're made. So we've been following the Carr family around. Let me first of all introduce you to Edward Carr, who has been heavily involved in making the well dressings for quite a number of years. Now, the great big boards that the well dressings are made of, you take yes. them and put them in the pond. Is that right? That's, that's right, yes. The well dressing process starts 11 days before we put the wells up. We first of all go out to dig the clay. That happens on the Saturday morning at 10 o'clock. We all head off on a trailer down to the bottom end of the village where we dig a big hole, load all the clay onto the trailer. Now, and bring when you're digging this big hole, do you use a JCB mechanical oh, digger? No, no, no. It's all done by hand with spades and shovels, mm -hmm. just like it always has been done, loaded onto a trailer. And it's taken back up to the buildings, distributed around the village at the six points where the wells are dressed. Then we put it in tubs where it's soaked, like the tubs are filled up with water and it's left to soak for a week. That same day in the afternoon we get the boards which have all been cleaned from the previous year and bring them down here to the pond and put them in the pond to soak. Alright so they're soaking there for a week uh, and that lets all the moisture go into the water go into the boards that's to right, keep yeah, the clay moist, is that the idea? Yep, yeah, that's right, we get the boards mm. moist as you say and the clay soaked so get as much moisture in everything as we can so that it keeps the flowers fresh for longer. Okay, now I noticed on the boards that there's a lot of nails on them, what are they for? That's right, that's to give the clay something to grip to. If we've just got smooth boards, we put the clay on and when we stand the boards up it will just slide off the bottom. So it's there's nails with big heads all over the boards and that like, gives the clay something to grip onto. Okay, so the boards are in for a week, they're yep. coming out all soaking wet, and then you take them back up and you begin to spread the clay. That's right, well, we start exactly a week later on the Saturday morning, we get the clay out of the tubs where it's been soaking, mm. and we puddle it first. But we shovel it out of the tubs, put it on the floor, and then literally just stamp in it and paddle in it and keep adding more and more water until we can get it to soft and we'll sort of try to aim to get it something like butter. So if we can mm. get it, same consistency of butter and then we add some salt which also keeps the moisture in it and then we put that back in into the sheds ready for the Sunday, the following day. Right, and then the Sunday you spread it out? The Sunday morning, yeah, we come down here with the trailers. We start the Sunday morning with a church service mm -hmm. and then after the church service we come down to the pond, get the boards out take them back up to the buildings where they're going to be dressed, lay them all out on trestles and then spread the clay on the top of them and smooth it all out like, like plaster, similar consistency to plaster all over it. Now I heard a rumour <coughs> that um, at the church service or after the church service you have breakfast. That's right yes, a, a bit of a new tradition we've started that after the service for all the people who are doing the well dressings we have bacon cobs in mm. the church, yeah, just to set us up for the week of well-dressing. And that's obviously something you enjoy. Oh, definitely, yes, <laughs> yes, highlight of the week. <laughs> Excellent stuff. <laughs> so once we, we've put all the clay on the boards on the Sunday, and then it's smoothed out, that's usually left then on the Sunday. We don't touch it again until the Monday morning. Monday morning, the actual dressing starts, and that's when we mark out the picture on all the boards, and all the helpers turn up then. Right, and it's your wife Margaret that does the designing my for the wife, U Tree yes, Well. My wife Margaret designs U Tree Well, she's doing it 20 years now. Right, 
Okay, so that is one sensor resistant to motor of car. Um, here we are in the, the pink skull, is that the right word? Um, and with the pigs, because this is uh, what market does. How many pigs do you have here? We've got, I think it's about 56 now altogether. P uh, sows, a boar, and piglets. Okay. <laughs> and how long do you keep the piglets for? Um, we've managed to sell uh, some as weaners, which is about six weeks old. But the majority of them we keep until six months old and sell them at market to all the time. Right. Okay, so you've not long enough to, to attach to them. Okay, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, totally good. Oh, I want to find out the well basically. So you're the designer for one of the wells. Which well is it you in? Yew Tree Well. Yew Tree Well. One of the bottom village. Yes. Okay, so can we go through now and have a look at the well dressing and see what you're doing with that? Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Once I've got the uh, boards in the shed, the clay's been put on. Um, we uh, get the paper, um, light on the clay, uh, get a sharp needle and mark it out on the outline. So we've got the holes going through into the clay. Pull the paper off, pull the shape that I've drawn around. And then that's when we put the older cones um, or the coffee beans in the outline. Okay, so we start with all the cones and coffee beans, and then you put all the petals that come in between. It's all natural products yes, that you use? Yes, all natural. And where do these come from? Do you have all the trees? <coughs> we, uh, we have various places, five rivers or um, well, one place was in the middle of Darling. <laughs> There's trees where we find the older cones, just pick them up on the floor basically. And the coffee beans, they've either been donated or we have to go and buy those. Right, so you don't go coffee trees here? No. <laughs> what about all these flowers? Um, what is this one for example? This one is chamomile flowers. Uh, very expensive. <laughs> um, could you grow these? No, I have to order those, order those in. Okay. And then donations? Donations, yeah, those are bought in. Okay, so who taught you how to do the well dressing? Uh, I just helped. Uh, I helped on this well when I first came here a number of years ago. And the lady who used to design it was packing up and she asked if I'd like to take it on, so I just took it on and I am doing it ever since, yeah. <laughs> We always tend to start at the bottom and work our way up like the tile effect so if it rains, the water hopefully should just run off. <laughs> now, a few years ago, I seem to remember as the well bracings were being put up, the rain came on absolutely to Yes, yeah, we, I think we just got one of the boards, I can't remember if it was a picture board or what, but we just got it on the trailer because the, the rain came. Thankfully, it was it was okay. <laughs> oh, that's good. While the others are getting on with the petling, they've come across the yard, and I'm with Chris Carr. Now he is the father of Edward that we've already met, uh, so we can see it's something of a family concern here. He's also something of a local historian, and a few years ago wrote this book, Tissington of Yesteryear. So it's uh, a pleasure to meet you and that uh, we're in your garden here, which you've got beautifully laid out, but um, you've got a few fields as well as a garden. Yes, there's uh, about 30 acres of land attached to the farm, which doesn't belong to the estate, and then uh, we rent 45 acres off the estate. That's quite a lot of uh, acreage. Now, what do you do with all that? Well, up to about 2001, we used to be dairying, but uh, after the foot and mouth outbreak, we went out of dairying and uh, we've gone into suckler cows. Uh, the son also has some sheep and a few pigs on the holding. Right, so do you like to keep your hand in? Are you active in the middle of all that? Being as I've done it all my life, I think I would miss it when we do finally retire. Mm. I'm sure I would. I'm sure you would. So you've done it all your life. Now you're born and bred in Tissington? Yes, yeah. And as I say, you've written this book, and so you know a bit about the place. Would you take us on a walk around the village and show us some of the interesting sites? I'll try and explain what I know anyway. <laughs> Good, yeah. thank you very much.
So here we are at the children's well, and uh, the interesting thing about children's well is that they often talk about Tissington has five wells plus children's well. Now, uh, what's the reason behind that? The reason being that the children's well didn't used to be dressed, but in 1983, Yorkshire Television came along and they said they would like to film some children dressing the well in Tissington. And so we decided it'd be a good idea for them to dress the children's well. Again, my mate Ken Unwin and myself made the boards for this well and uh, my daughter agreed to draw the picture and with other members of the village they dressed the well for the first time, 1983, and it has been dressed ever since. All right, so 1983, so it's not that long ago. Not really. Um, no. In relation to all the other wells, no. which go way back over, well, well over 100 years, isn't it? That's right. So here we are in the church, it's St Mary's Church, Parish Church, and um, it's been here a long time, it goes back to Norman days? Yes, we have the Norman arch there, and there's a Norman arch over the doorway as we come in. I'm not sure whether the font is Saxon or Norman, but that is very old. Right. The North Isle was ed added in about 1850 uh, by Francis Fitzherbert. Right, so that's a, a more recent addition then. Yes. Now Francis Fitzherbert did quite a, a, a number of building things around the village. Yes, she was responsible, I believe, for the rebuilding of the school down in the bottom there. Mm -hmm. Right. And um, then there's all the beautiful stained glass windows here too, which are lovely. Um, Noah's Ark up there and various uh, pieces from the Fitzherbert family over the years. Um, beautiful church with the, the arches and things, isn't it? That's right, um, yes, it's very very well known throughout the district anyway. Right, okay, good. Well, let's move on and uh, I'll find out a little bit about the, uh, the old railway station. Right, so we're at the old station here um, and looking down it's no longer a station so tell me a bit about this it's disappeared when the 1960s yes I believe it was about 1964 um, in the early years there was some steps that led down there onto the platform on this side mm -hmm. uh, the main platform was that side and uh, at the bottom end there was a warehouse which could open out onto either the track or onto the road on the other side. Just below that is the cattle dock, which is still visible. Um, that was for unloading livestock onto the rail. In this corner here was the water tower where they filled up the engines. So the steam trains then? Oh yes. And would there be more livestock and cargo transported than there would people? I'm pretty sure there would be in the early years because um, milk used to go down and eventually get down to London. Um, further up the track they were connected to the lime quarries and so there was a lot of limestone came down. Well here we are outside the Methodist Chapel, uh, having come up the lane, so um, interesting building, but it, uh, this is not the original one is it? No, the original one was a wooden structure with a tin roof, um, originally built in 1866, but this one replaced it in 1955. 
Right, and this one's larger than the previous one? Yes, quite a bit larger. And my uncle, Mr. Johnson, gave them extra land in order to build it because the old one was right up to the road. Right, so in 1955, you would have been around then. Yes. Uh, you'd remember some of the people involved in the construction and... Yes, there was a local builder from Ashbourne that uh, did the building. Right, and um, the size of the congregation now is just a small village. Many folks would come to the chapel. It's quite a good congregation at this present time, compared with a lot of chapels. Right, and it's a monthly have, service you have. They have a service yes, once a month, yeah. yeah. Right, and at the front of the chapel, uh, just at the front, there's a plaque there. A plaque with the stone lane right. when this chapel was built, and Mr. Johnson's name and my father's name were on that plaque. Right, so you've got a bit of family history going on here. Uh, yes. Yeah. Good. Right, so here we are at Hans Well, uh, a lovely well with ornamental stonework and named after a famous family who's lived in the house behind me here some time ago. Um, but it's got special meaning for Chris because uh, you've got a story that goes back a long time, haven't you? Having been born at the beginning of the war, um, me and my mate Ken had heard a lot about well dressings in Tissington, but in those days the wells were not dressed because of the war years. So one year when we were playing together, Ken used to live in the house here, we decided to dress Anne's well. We gathered some daisies and made a daisy chain, put it around the basin. Just on here. Some yeah. bluebells and some buttercups. And we told parents we'd been and dressed the Anne's well. The following year, the village people got together and formed a committee and decided to redress the wells after the war years. This was 1950, and this was the first time that we'd seen what well dressing was all about. Right, so that would be the whole big display, the big picture and all yes, the pickling and everything for that. You have the photograph of me and Ken either side that first well, mm. and at the top of the board under the cross there was the clasp hands and the two flags of America and Britain and the text was grant us thy peace which was very appropriate after all the war years that we'd had previously. Mm, indeed grant us thy peace and what about the the picture in the middle of the board? The picture was Daniel in the lines then. Right, right. Oh, that's tremendous, and that you would just be a little boy at that time. Yes, we'd be uh, um, well nine years old, really. Right, right. So that's gone back uh, a few years. You've got many happy memories. Yes, we've uh, been associated with the well dressing ever since, really. Right, very good. Both of us, in fact. Great. Well, well, thank you. Well, thank you very much, Chris, for bringing us around the village. It's been very interesting finding out all about the different wells and a uh, bit of your personal history too. Quite interesting. You've written the book and uh, lots of interesting things there and a bit more as we've been going around. So thank you for that. Uh, and very much appreciated. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. I hope thank it's you. of interest to everyone anyway. Thank you. Well, the dressing's done over three days, Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday. And then it's finished usually Wednesday afternoon, three, four o'clock time. Then we've got to put it up. So that's the hard job again. We have to come into the shed, pick the boards up. The well, like this one, it's made out of five boards. Each one's very heavy, so we have a tractor and trailer comes and there's five or six men have to lift each board onto the trailer and then they're brought down to the location where the well's erected. You need at least two or three men to lift each board. Each board, yeah. Yes. And then taking them from being laid on a trailer to upright like this. Yeah. And you've got one piece that sits right on the top. How do you get that up there? That's right. I mean, these we, we build it up from the ground. We put the outer columns up first and then we literally lower them off the trailer to the floor and drag them into place. Then they're stood up and supported with poles that go into a hole in the ground. 
then the top board here we actually lift on with a tractor and loader. It used to be done with a block and tackle, but we've moved with the times a little bit and we now lift it up with a tractor. Mm -hmm. Now I notice that coffin well they still use the block and tackle. That, that's right, yeah, the coffin well they've got an access problem, they can't get a tractor in. So, so they have to still do it the old fashioned way. Yeah. Okay. Clearly this year they're up without any problem. That's right, it's been a fantastic yes. year this year, the weather's just been right for us. Great, excellent. Well, trust that all goes well Thank over the, uh, the next week. Thank you. These pictures have occasionally departed from the biblical theme to celebrate current events like the Queen's Jubilee, William and Kate's wedding, John Wesley's tricentenary, the new millennium, and even some good causes. However, the records that are available show that from the early 19th century, when the practice of erecting collages of flower petals began, the overriding theme of the wells has consistently been taken from the Bible. Sometimes there is a duo theme linking a contemporary event to biblical truth. Help for Heroes ties in with the example of the great love God has in giving his own dear son to die for us. And when 100 years of Disney entertainment was celebrated, the well declares Jesus' love for children right in the centre. On the 200th anniversary of William Wilberforce's abolition of the slave trade, the accompanying biblical picture was of Joseph, who had been sold to slave traders travelling to Egypt. Many of the well-known Bible stories that have been featured throughout these years make the love of Jesus abundantly clear. Jesus has compassion on the multitude and feeds 5,000 men plus women and children with just five loaves and two small fish. Jesus saved the day at the wedding in Cana of Galilee by turning ordinary water into the best wine in abundance. Jesus told us to observe the birds of the air and how they are cared for by God himself, then applies this truth to us as he says, how much more will he care for you? The old hymn, We plough the fields and scatter the good seed on the land, goes on to say, but it is fed and watered by God's almighty hand. Psalm 23 is all about the shepherd care that the Lord has for his people. Even though we walk through the darkest valley, we need not fear when the Lord is with us. Jesus tells a parable of the lost sheep to help us understand that the Lord comes looking for us, even though we have gone far away from him. Moses is one of the great characters from the Old Testament. God preserves him from death as a baby. Moses' attempt to rescue the Hebrew slaves in his own strength was doomed to failure. But God calls Moses from the burning bush and backs up his authority by sending ten plagues to Pharaoh and the Egyptians. The final plague was when the Hebrews put the blood of their best lamb on the doorposts so the angel of death passed over them. Finally, the Hebrews are released from slavery, leave Egypt and miraculously cross the Red Sea as the Lord God parts the waters, enabling them to cross on dry land. God's love and care is shown as he supplies water from the rock and fresh food daily. But as Moses is commanded to ascend Mount Sinai, the Lord gives him the Ten Commandments. These identify the sinful state of our hearts. Sadly, when Eve was deceived by the serpent to take the fruit, and Adam did likewise, sin and its consequences entered the world. Like the Jew who had been attacked and left for dead, sin robs people of their integrity, bringing breakdown in society. Just as Florence Nightingale, the lady with the lamp, discovered that common dirt brings disease and death, so too sin is a spiritual dirt that robs us of our health, bringing disease and ultimately the second death. God showed his disgust for sin when the Lord cleared the temple of the money changers. Fortunately for us, God has a plan to deal with sin and bring personal forgiveness. This involved the dear Son of God being crucified on a cross, 
in fulfilment of the prophecies the Lord had given over the thousands of years prior to the birth of the Messiah. Just as the Passover lamb was sacrificed to protect the Hebrew slaves, Jesus, the Lamb of God, was sacrificed to protect us from eternal condemnation and deliver us from sin. Although Jesus was truly dead, he did not stay dead. On the third day he rose from the grave, alive forevermore. The resurrection of Christ brought great joy for his disciples at that time, but it also brings hope for us today. There is a living Saviour who brings forgiveness and peace to those who put their faith in him. The young deer longs for the cooling stream when being pursued in a hunt. The stream will bring safety as its scent is lost to its quarry. The stream will also bring refreshment as the deer goes right down into the cool water. So too Jesus brings safety from sin and the refreshment of eternal life from God. Holman Hunt's painting of The Light of the World portrays Jesus standing outside the door of your life. Jesus said, If any man will open the door, I will come in and have fellowship with him, and he with me. Will you open the door and let Jesus in? <laughs>